When you think of Idaho, what comes to mind? Not quite. together. Let's plan your next weekend trip today on Hidden Gems in the Gem State. If you've been hanging out with us this season, you know we're all about showing you the absolute best ways to take advantage of this amazing state. And you'll also know we're based out of Boise, but we're not going to let that stop us from experiencing the absolute best that Idaho has to offer. And there's a lot that's worth making the drive to see. So that's why for this episode, we're making the seven and a half hour drive from Boise to Coeur d'Alene to kick off an epic weekend in Northern Idaho. And I can't think of a better way to start our adventure than hundreds of feet up in the trees. I'm here with Paul Butters with Timberline Adventures and we have an awesome day planned. What are we doing? Well, we're gonna do some zip lining. I'm uh, so excited. So the property is 20 minutes from Coeur d'Alene. Uh, okay. We bring you out in vans. We jump in Yamahas and UTVs that take you to the top of the mountains. About a mile ride up, about a 10 minute ride in UTVs. From there we're zipping all the way back down to where the vans pick us up. Awesome. Before we could get to all that though, I needed to get strapped up. Perfect. My two guides through the trees today are Libby and Max. There are also the ones trying to walk me through putting on my harness, which isn't as easy as it looks. This goes over my head? Yeah, this one. <laughs> there you go. I know, it's not a great <laughs> I eventually got the hang of it though. Perfect. Okay. okay. After saying hi to the official Timberline Pops and finding a helmet that actually fit me. I have a big head. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. We're good. good. Okay. Cool. That's here. Yeah. We all loaded up in the ATV and headed off to our first zip line. As excited as the dogs were, they couldn't come with us, but even without them, it was a very fun and scenic drive. After about 10 minutes, we pulled up to our launch point. And I followed Max and Libby on a super short walk. Oh, it's literally right here. Oh, that's cool. Before we got started, Max gave us a safety briefing. So, first things first, we ask that you guys don't grab the cable. Uh, easy way to get summer fingers. Summer here, summer there, summer everywhere. Max will be zipping first to catch me on the other side. Alrighty, see you two down there. And Libby will be zipping last to help me get all set up. Break that line clear. After Max gave the okay, all right, please. it was my turn. Zip off. Zip off. Right? Zip it and go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once Max got me down, and Libby caught up with us. It was time to walk across the platform and link up to our next zip line. Even though being more than 100 feet off the ground might seem intimidating, it's not a big deal if you fall. You are connected to the tree with two points. Those okay. carabiners break in strength. I believe on those ones, this is the equivalent of about a 
900 pound man jumping off the tree would hold that much weight. Okay, so. I could zip a bus if I wanted to. You could zip a bus? It would be very inconvenient, but I could do it. <laughs> With that information, I had to walk on the edge. Whoa, wow, that was daring. That was daring. <laughs> These are cool. I mean, it is really cool because you don't have to worry up here. Yeah. Strap into a tree. <laughs> I didn't make that jump, but Max took the leap onto zip line number two. All right, I'll see you guys over there. Of seven zip lines that we get to experience today. Each line gradually gets bigger, which is great if you're afraid of heights because you really get to ease into it. And then maybe you'll even feel comfortable going backwards. Okay. <laughs> okay. However you choose to zip, it won't be long before you make it to your first suspension bridge. <laughs> okay. See, you're way slower than I am. <laughs> you're going backwards here. Okay, okay you're, some slow. Slow. <laughs> you're slow. You're slow. Alright. Please go. He's more scared than I am, <laughs> so it's funny. <laughs> Are you freaked out? <laughs> I really enjoyed it, but I'm not sure my fiance slash photographer can say the same. Someone's afraid of heights. <laughs> well, that someone isn't me, and it definitely isn't Libby either. Once we had a good laugh, it was time to keep on zipping. We are now officially halfway through the course, but we have to walk to the next portion. And there's only one way down. I wasn't quite ready for a uh, whatever that was. So I attempted something different. Or can I like trust fall or will I like get whiplash? Nope. I can trust fall. I'd say out of the three of us, Libby is the only one who did this jump gracefully. <laughs> Wait, no. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. <laughs> From there, we walked for about five minutes. And then we arrived to a beautiful lookout. A beautiful sight. Drink some water learned about the area, and headed to suspension bridge number two. This bridge is crazy. So the last one you said was 50 feet and this is 100? 150. 150? Yep, so three times as long. Is that all? That's okay. All. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> Come on in. Hey, you're welcome. All right, this isn't intimidating at all. It creeps. <laughs> Added effect. <laughs> Whoa. 150 feet up? Ugh. You scared? Oh my god, I almost fell. <laughs> and I'm doing it with no rope. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Do I get workers comp? Do you get workers comp? No. Jeez. You get to marry me, that's what you work for. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so cool. Once I made it to the platform, Max gave me a little history lesson. 
and told me that this tree we're in right now is more than 400 years old. This tree's been around longer than the U.S. Oh my god. Once Max was all set up for the next zip line, he waited around a bit. <laughs> See, then I say, what are you doing? And you say, oh, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> and then went on his way. Whether you want to freestyle your leap. One. Rocket fish! <laughs> or take it normally. The best part is that this experience can be whatever you want it to be. The only restrictions are that you have to be at least seven years old and weigh less than 260 pounds. But it's something that's fun for the whole family, especially this next part. We're headed to a literal treehouse in the middle of the forest to take on our final and most intense zip line yet. From there, you'll take the stairs, which are beautiful and made from other trees on the property. It'll lead you to the last zip line of the day, which comes in at 1,600 feet long and 450 feet high. And it does not disappoint. Ribbon. So I just go like this, right? Yep. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> course, head to ZipTimberline.com and make a reservation. <laughs> and maybe practice some of your moves ahead of time for when you eventually have to get down. I'm ready. A big leap. <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh! Oh! And after so just a fun. few hours, our beautiful day in the trees was over. Yeah, I know. For the grateful part. <laughs> I'm free. Okay. Thank you. That was awesome. After we drove back down, we said our goodbyes and headed towards our next adventure. Up next, we'll tell you how to find this amazing natural water slide. And later, we'll take you on one of the most beautiful bike rides in the country. There's a no place like Idaho in the summertime. And even though it gets pretty hot here, there's no shortage of places to cool off. And today, we're going to enjoy a very unique body of water. <laughs> if you've ever been to a water park before, this might look familiar to you, but this slide is entirely natural. It's a true hidden gem, and <laughs> I really mean hidden. We got lost on our drive up, so listen carefully. Your first point of reference in finding this unique place is Priest Lake, which is a destination within itself. This secluded little beach spot is only 15 miles from the Idaho-Canada border. And from our starting point in Coeur d'Alene, it'll take you two hours to get here. And once you do, you can enjoy one of Idaho's least developed and most pristine lakes. Visiting Priest Lake is a great way to break up the drive. And even though the trailhead for the natural water slide we're headed to is five miles away from here, it's gonna require about another 20 minutes in the car. Because this dirt road is very bumpy and filled with dips you'll need to be on the lookout for. Hidden amongst the trees and five miles east of the Lion's Head Campground is where you'll be parking. You'll know you're here once you see the base of Temple Mountain, which rises 3,000 feet above your stopping point. As you can see, the terrain here is very different. These mountains are made entirely of granite. They're beautiful to look at and when paired with water, perfect to slide down but no good thing comes without a bit of work. So in order to try out the slide, you've got to do some walking. 
The first thing we need to do is recover from our accidental detour and get going on this three mile hike. So after getting lost and almost four hours in the car, we made it. And I'm really excited to see this place. Better be worth it. We're definitely off the grid. The car got a little dirty. Just a little dusty. <laughs> The graffiti will let you know you're in the right spot. Then pace yourself for a beautiful hike filled with lots of water. This is the cutest hike. I feel like I'm in a Winnie the Pooh book. <laughs> we probably passed six creeks just like it, so I'd recommend closed toed shoes for this hike. You made it. And even though it's very scenic, it's not very well marked. Look at this. This is cool. Is this where we're supposed to go? I know we're supposed to cross a river. Is it this river? It's the only river. Okay. I don't see any signs, but it looks cool. So. A lot of the hike went like that for us. And this did end up being the wrong way. But it was gorgeous, so we stayed and enjoyed the view for a while. What the heck? This is so pretty. I was not expecting this. Look at it. Oh my God. Finding this spot was one of many happy little accidents that happened along our journey. This creek goes on for miles and miles, so there are multiple points where you can easily get off the trail, swim, or just soak up the scenery. And I definitely recommend doing so, because it's truly unlike anything I've ever seen. But we're losing daylight, so we have to get a move on. To be honest, I don't totally understand how I saw so many people doing this hike in swimsuits and flip-flops. This is treacherous. Because there's definitely some thick brush. Okay. It's like a jungle. Uh-huh. Catching the spider webs though. Thanks. My face. <laughs> I'm very lucky I had Case to catch the spider webs for me. But you're almost there and it's totally worth right. it in the end. Okay. <laughs> and that I had these people to keep us you from making yet over. another wrong turn. So luckily we've run into like 10 people that told us you have to keep going. So when you see this lake, don't stop. Don't assume that you're going the wrong way and make a right or a left. I guess you have to go through it. So, whew, wish me luck. Well, I definitely needed some luck because there was no way my shoes were gonna make it through unscathed. Got no choice but to get wet. Okay. I've never dressed right, ever. Luckily, it was a hot day, so I didn't have to worry about my wet feet causing a problem. And from there, the hike somehow got even prettier. I feel like I'm like in an enchanted forest, sleeping beauty situation. This. We've taken a lot of hikes throughout Idaho, and I'm not kidding, this might be my favorite. Like this might be the prettiest one we've ever taken. This is stunning. Well, this next spot we stumbled upon is probably one of the most magical places I've ever been. Oh my God. No way. I think this is it. It wasn't, but it was a phenomenal pit stop, equipped with a beautiful waterfall and a lovely place to take a dip. Just be warned, this water is snow melt. This is like a hot spring. Like, there'd be a million people here. It's been here, been here all day. Good? It's great. <laughs> a plus. It's freezing. Uh, can't be in there for more than like 30 seconds, but it's beautiful. Watching Case made me super jealous. And even though I didn't bring a swimsuit, I wasn't gonna let that stop me. Don't slip. 
turns out I don't really like to listen. And it was in that moment I realized this amazing okay. spot not a good idea. is not the right spot. We had actually overshot it. Luckily, it was just a few minutes back down until we finally made it. That's the water slide. Okay. Oh, wow. This place really is a slice of heaven. And after watching other people go down, I let Case take the lead. Ow is a word that I'm going to be saying a lot today. Judging by how that went for you, it's probably not going to go so well for me, but I'm doing it anyway. In order to keep my leggings from getting snagged, I brought this. Okay. You brought your big uh, trash diaper. Trash diaper? It's not just a fashion statement. It also helps you to go much faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. You guys, I figured it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now it's time to put my new outfit to the test. Oh, oh no! Oh god! After that, this is fashion. <laughs> we just kept going for it. Awesome. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! The crash landing seemed to be a theme for both of us because all you have to stop you is this divot in the rock and this rope, which for smaller people is not an issue. Oh, I got so <laughs> But neither Case or I are small at all, so we shot down way too fast. I think I lost, I lost for it halfway through. Did you hit it? I flew way past the rope and was only able to stop myself by grabbing it, leading me to wonder so what would have happened if I missed it and I didn't like what I found. Reflexes and didn't grab the rope. That would be what happened to me. I would get face planted into a rock and drown in a river. Not how I want it to end. So <laughs> grab the rope. Grab the rope. And do it a couple times. Don't test your luck. <laughs> gone backwards and been like, oh, there's a rope. <laughs> it, oh, yeah. Not realizing I was gonna go like die if I didn't grab it. Well, there's like, a reason my it's life like depends on the rope. I didn't I just like oh cute a little rope. It's like no if you miss it you die. It's just casual you just die. It's like <laughs> while I may have been a tad dramatic, it is worth noting that this isn't the safest thing in the world. Just remember you can always slow down by sticking the trash bag. Because getting lost cost us so much time, Case and I ended up being the last ones to leave and had a little too much fun. Here comes Sophia down the catwalk wearing an iconic hefty bag. 
guess we'll call it Project Alleyway. <laughs> Project Alleyway? <laughs> Project Alleyway. I'm a trendsetter, what can I say? We got the whole slide to ourselves. We had an amazing time, but to avoid hiking in the dark, we had to get going. Coming up, we'll take you on the bike ride of a lifetime and tell you what you need to know before you go. Idaho has some of the best biking in the country with more than 12,000 miles of single track trails for mountain bikers. And who could forget the iconic 25 mile stretch of the green belt we get to enjoy here in Boise. One trail that really sets the state apart though is Hiawatha. You're looking at a decommissioned transcontinental railroad that has been converted into a trail for bikers. And just like a typical railroad, this comes with multiple tunnels and bridges. And lucky for us, follows a gradual downhill slope. So you barely have to do any pedaling and can enjoy your time sightseeing. Hiawatha is one of the most iconic and scenic bike paths in the state, but it's not actually entirely in Idaho. The path actually starts in Montana and then crosses you back over into Idaho after the first mile. And from our starting point in Coeur d'Alene, it's going to take an hour to get here. And there's a lot of prep you have to do ahead of time. Go online to ridehiawatha.com to book tickets, bike rentals, helmets, and bike lights, all of which are mandatory in order to experience the trail. I am so excited. This looks awesome. Once you get your bike passes and put your helmet on, you're ready to go. I match. <laughs> All red. I'm so excited. Ready? Ready. Okay. This bike ride starts off with a bang. And within about a minute, you'll enter St. Paul Pass Tunnel. It's more than a mile and a half long, is always cold inside, regardless of how hot it is outside. It's filled with lots of mud and it's pitch dark. Oh, that's blinding! <laughs> My laugh is echoing. Okay. This path is unlike anything I've ever experienced before. It was actually open to the public 20 years ago and is strictly for bikers. So no need to worry about any motor traffic in this specific tunnel. The 1.6 mile stretch will take you under the Bitterroot Mountains and is actually where you'll cross state lines. By the time we got out, oh my God, oh, I'm so dirty. <laughs> we were back in Idaho. Along the 15 mile route, you'll see multiple plaques where you can learn about the history of the railroad, which dates back all the way to 1905. The 6,000 miles of track started in Chicago and expanded west for the Pacific Extension, which is what you're looking at right now. The track took 9,000 men five years to build. Looking around, I can see why it took so long especially when you take into consideration how cold the winters can be and how much detail had to go into constructing all of these tunnels. More than a hundred years later, I can say they did a great job. And lucky for us, there's 10 of them that we get to go through and no two are exactly alike. The last passenger train came through here in 1961. The railroad later filed for bankruptcy and was abandoned in 1980. So while you won't find any active lines in here, something to note is that you will need to be on the lookout for motor vehicles in some of the tunnels, just like this shuttle that runs all day to take bikers back to the top, which is really nice because you never have to pedal uphill. You'll also get to enjoy seven sky bridges, each one more beautiful than the last. All in all, it only took us about two hours to get to the bottom, where we hopped on the bus and headed back to the base of tunnel number one. Once we made it back through, we were ready to jump in the car and head home. 
Although I was in desperate need of some new clothes. Um, I got dirty again. <laughs> that was so cool. No amount of mud could change how amazing our weekend in Northern Idaho was. And even though we could have stayed all summer, it's time for us to head back to Boise. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms at Sophia Dumani TV to see how you can uncover all of the hidden gems in the gem state. Have a great weekend.